dear <coughs> dhamma friends today we are here to discuss on meditation so meditation means doing things mindfully and consciously the the, the meaning of the pali word bhavana the meaning of this pali word bhavana for meditation is doing consciously doing consciously but in our in our life especially in a normal life there are so many things happening sounds they they come to our ears and sensations physical movements they happen in our body and body is inhaling and in exhaling it happens we are not doing it happens also see how many thoughts come to your mind it happens too they come not only thoughts emotions we don't have to do anything we don't have to make any effort to be in angry nobody makes any effort to be in angry it comes it comes anger comes and unhappiness it also comes so things happen in our life so many things happen especially in our mind many things are happening memories mind remembers things and mind makes some plans some uh, future expectations also it happens just just look at just look at in one moment in one minute how many things are happening in your mind so happening is one thing to happen something we don't have to be there really you don't have to be there all these things are happening sounds are coming to your ears and sensations are happening they are arising in your body in breath and out breath they come and they go and thoughts memories expectations ideas feelings and emotions they all are arising in our mind so these things are happening all the time in our life all the time especially emotions are taking very important role in our mind in our life just see whatever emotion comes to us then what happens what happens to us whenever mind is angry then what happens to us we used to say that we are angry or that person is angry we used to say but really that person is not there anymore only anger is there we used to say that 
our parents are angry or our children are angry and our partners husband is angry or wife is angry really when the anger comes when the anger is there your husband is not there anymore no he is not there anymore and your wife is not there either then who is there only anger is there only that particular emotion is there and there are four things are happening through your husband or through your wife which you do not expect from your husband or from your wife or even from your parents or from your children from your friends you did not expect such a words or such a behaviors from them but whenever anger comes it happens these words are coming from their mouth and this type of ugly behaviors are happening from their body so they are happening because the person is not there we are not there too only emotions are there so this is the way that our mind behaves at the moment so th that's why meditation is so important to be here to be with ourselves now we are not here we are not with ourselves only thoughts and emotions are there and they make decisions what we have to do so we just follow whatever our emotions command us to do so whenever emotion comes there are two kind of main reactions that we do one is we express them that is very normal we just express we express our anger through our words and through our silence too sometimes anger asks us to be silent not to talk at all then we are in silence no words and sometimes anger asks us to blame them then we do so we express the anger we express all kind of emotions so this is the first popular way to deal with our emotions we just express so when you express your emotions then you are becoming an instrument of your own emotions emotion is taking the master role of our life and we are becoming a small wheel of the system so no choice no freedom at all we have to follow whatever emotions ask us to do so dear friends whenever we are used to express our emotions the result is what happened is we are becoming more and more weaker and emotions are becoming more and more stronger your anger becomes more and more stronger than you if you express your anger all the time whenever anger comes and the person is becoming weaker and weaker so this happens to us too and no control at all no control anger is controlling you your mind is controlling you and we cannot control our mind so this is one of the results of expressing emotions 
And the other way is we try to repress our emotions because we think we judge our emotions, we judge ourselves. And then we think it is not nice to express these emotions and uh, not good for me, not good for others. And we think about our, our position, our reputation. Because of all these reasons, we want to suppress and repress our emotions. We want to hide them. We want to push them away. So this is the other extreme. We are always in one of these extremes. Either expressing or repressing. And when we repress, when we try to control this emotion, whatever, then we have to make so much effort to repress them. We have to make so much effort to hide them. And whenever we hide them, we have to find a place to hide them. We need some secret place to hide them. So, when, whenever we try to hide our emotions, we have to find a place in our mind to hide them. So, by repressing, by suppressing, we create so-called unconscious mind. Really, unconscious mind is not the part of our mind originally. Originally, only one mind is there, conscious mind. And we make two rooms, we create two rooms in this mind. One is conscious mind and one is unconscious mind. So unconscious mind is something that we have created to hide so-called negative, negative and ugly feelings, emotions and memories. So now we have two minds. One is conscious mind. Conscious mind, I think uh, we all are aware about it the mind that we use for thinking, to make decisions, to recognize things, to think. So the surface level of the mind. And what is the unconscious mind? It is not in the surface level, it is somewhere behind, under the conscious mind. And we use that mind we are using that mind to hide things. Hide ugly things, unpleasant things, negative things. So then we think it's now the problem is over. Whenever we are able to repress things by making so much effort, then we, we think that the problem is over. Hmm. But really, the problem is, is existing strongly when we keep it part of our unconscious mind. As I, as I said earlier that uh, Originally, there are no two minds, only one mind. To understand this, uh, this idea, you better to look at, uh, look at uh, the, the, the behaviors of children. They, they have emotions too. Sometimes they, after while they are playing uh, some games, then uh, because of some reasons, they start to fight between each other. They they fight each other. After fighting, 
again they restart their game. They, they again start to play. But uh, for them it is very easier to be angry, to take some actions with anger, and after a few minutes again uh, make friends with each other. It is very easier for them. But for us as adults, for us, once we fight with somebody, then it is very difficult, very, very difficult to even say good morning again. It's very difficult. To smile again, not easy. So wh why? Why only children can do it? Why they can easily forget? Why we cannot forget? Why our anger is keeping in our mind, staying in our mind for longer period? And why, how children can easily let go of it? One reason is they do not judge themselves. They do not think that they are becoming bad because of their emotions. But we think we are becoming bad because of the anger, or they are becoming bad because of their anger. We judge ourselves and we judge others. But children usually, they don't judge. But emotions come and they fight because of the anger. But after that, no judgment. And again, the friendliness, it comes back. They do not try to repress their anger. So they don't need uh, something called unconscious mind. But we need this uh, secret safe to hide all kind of, all kind of negative memories and emotions. And other thing is, when uh, children, they cry, they cry whenever they are in a problem, whenever they are sad, or whenever they are hungry, or whenever pain is there, they cry. And uh, what we, we tell them, do not cry. We always tell our children, don't cry. Do not cry. <laughs> oh, you are in a public place, do not cry. You are in a bus, don't cry. Or others are around you, do not cry. So we always teach them not to cry, not to cry. They cry because of some problems. Some pain is there behind their tears. Maybe psychological, maybe physical. But the problem might be there. But we do not give a solution to their problem. Instead of solving their problems, what we do is we force themselves to not to cry. Not to cry. So what we are teaching them is to hide their pain. Hide. Don't cry. Hide. Hide your tears and learn to smile. So pain is inside. And the natural reaction is crying, but uh, now we interrupt, interfere the natural uh, process, and we told them to smile, learn to smile. Once uh, I went to a studio to take a photo, for to apply visa for for a country foreign country and uh, so when i went to the studio the photographer he told me that uh, before take a photo uh, he asked me to go to another room and i went to that room and uh, i i didn't know actually what i can what i have to do in that room then he told me to brush my hair and uh, 
do some uh, some makeup and i said no need just take a photo so he wasn't happy he always asked me to brush my hair and uh, and uh, change the shirt and he won't i said this is the only shirt i i had in that moment he said no no i can give us some better one so he wants to offer a better shirt i said no need just uh, take a photo take a photo so he wasn't happy anyway he asked me to sit a chair in front of his camera and uh, so before I took a photo he asked me oh at least can you smile <laughs> smile to the camera so whenever i heard that uh, smile to the camera actually laugh came because we can smile to people no we can smile to each other but to camera just to the camera it's a joke <laughs> smile to the television smile to the car smile to the uh, uh, radio and smile to the what is the purpose so laugh came and he took a photo <laughs> so after that when i was returned into meditation center i was thinking uh, this very interesting thing why we do want to smile when somebody is taking a photo why because we want to show that we are very happy very beautiful very joyful person hmm? we want to show this picture we want to make a picture in others mind a beautiful picture of ourselves and therefore we make some effort to smile but behind this smile there are a lot of problems in our mind in our heart so usually the smile it it comes from our heart it it comes naturally but now we have to make some effort to smile because lot of problems are inside in our unconscious mind and we do not want to see them we do not want to solve them we just want to keep all these painful things inside of the mind and the conscious mind we always want to keep it clean and beautiful and we think the problem is over if the surface level if the surface of the carpet is clean then we think ah it's beautiful so we want to sweep and keep all the dust under the carpet and uh, under the nobody is looking at under the carpet only everybody can see the top of the carpet and top of the carpet is so beautiful but whatever we keep in our unconscious mind they can grow this is the thing they are not dying all these memories all these emotions are not dying once we keep them under the mind like they are they are like seeds and if you keep them inside the earth inside the ground then they start to root rooting and growing so they are becoming stronger and stronger so same thing happens to us whenever we hide these emotions whenever we try to repress them suppress them then what can happen is really they are starting to root inside the unconscious mind rooting and we we cannot see once you plant a seed inside the earth nobody can see how it it is rooting it is invisible but one day it can become a tree very strong tree so same thing can happen all these repressed thoughts memories and emotions are becoming stronger and stronger they are becoming really powerful if we repress them 
and then they disturb to us in many ways many many ways one way is so we always want to hide negative things painful things sorrowful things so we want to keep them inside our heart and close the chapter close the door so once we are not uh, open ourselves for painful things then we cannot open ourselves for joyful things this can happen again and again that means if you if you do not allow yourself to cry then smile doesn't come you you are not able to laugh because both are coming from the same roots from your heart now you are not allowing your heart to function normally then we we are unable to enjoy things in our life so this can happen to us we miss the joy the natural joy the real joy the true happiness another thing is this unconscious mind is very close to the body so therefore we have to experience so many psychosomatic problems and now the psychosomatic uh, list of sicknesses are becoming longer and longer and longer so nobody knows the reasons what is the reason for this pain and that pain and we are going to see this doctor and that doctor and uh, uh we do they ask us to do so many test and we have to pay for all these test and we have to consult this doctor and this consultant and uh, after having all these experiments and test nobody can find reasons for our physical pain for our physical problems and then finally they ask you to go and see a counselor a psychologist so we go to go and meet psychologist or a counselor and we have to sit with the counselor for many sessions and also we have to pay for that and after having so many sessions so many meetings so many interviews with the counselor then he ask you to cry <laughs> and uh, he or she told you the steps what is the first step of crying the second steps third steps uh, so this happens oftenly this happened hmm? so we had to experience or we had to face to so many psychosomatic problems because of our repressed emotions and it disturbs our sleep and it makes so many bad dreams and nightmares and uh, it also disturb to our present relationships if we had very bad memories of if we have bad memories of our past relationships and we did not solve those problems psychologically and emotionally and if we hide them in our unconscious mind then they can disturb our present relationships mm. so un un uh, reasonable fear can come or some uh, suspicions we don't know the reason but we are not we can't keep trust on others so this can happen often and nobody knows the reason the reason is not reason is not related to the present so dear friends therefore really we have to solve this problem called unconscious mind we have to solve we have to look at this unconscious mind 
and we have to understand them and we have to clean them and we have to make our unconscious mind empty but at the moment we are unable to look at them because of two reasons one reason is whenever we start to think about those uh, past emotions and unpleasant memories again we are becoming emotional then again we open the door for all kind of past emotions so we cannot do anything this is one reason another reason is because of our long term habit now it is difficult to open our unconscious mind very difficult to open so because our unconscious mind is not now it is not listening to us now conscious mind is, of course it we can deal with our conscious mind but unconscious mind it doesn't listen to us so if we say uh, i want to think this then unconscious mind doesn't want to think about it therefore we had to do two things one thing is we had to make our conscious mind stronger because now conscious mind is weak especially compared to our unconscious mind our conscious mind is so weak that's why whenever you remember some past incidents again you are becoming emotional because your conscious mind is not strong enough to to remember them and you have to learn to open your unconscious mind these two things are very important if you just open your unconscious mind without preparing yourself to face to them then it can be a shock so people are becoming crazy and mad whenever their unconscious mind opened in unexpected in events so that's that can make you crazy that can make you mad you are not prepared to see them so first we had to prepare our conscious mind we had to qualified first and second we had to learn how to open our unconscious mind so when we practice samatha bhavana or concentration meditation in that meditation actually what we are doing is in one way we can say that we do what we are doing is we are making our conscious mind stronger so we have a particular meditation technique and we always try to focus our conscious mind onto that particular meditation technique and we always try to keep our mind there and by focusing again and again and by keeping our mind our attention on that particular wholesome subject we can make our conscious mind stronger so that is one of the purposes of doing concentration meditation to make our conscious mind stronger and the other thing is the when we practice concentration meditation we always use a present object to meditate it can be your in and out breathing so in and out breathing uh, your present action it can be your walk when you do walking meditation so walking is also your present action and uh, sometimes you can use present uh, sounds to cultivate your concentration so whatever you hear in that moment is also a present experience so when you practice concentration meditation you are training yourself to be here and now live in the present moment and third thing so whatever meditation technique that you you are following it doesn't matter you hear sounds no way to stop hearing sounds 
you continuously hear sounds. And you, you are experiencing bodily sensations. Also, you are having some thoughts, memories occur in your mind, even when you meditate. So, whenever we experience such a things, we are learning to not to judge them. This is very, very important exercise. Whatever you hear, you are not thinking, ah, it's a disturbance. That sound is disturbing to me. So you are not giving any negative value to whatever you hear. Even to your bodily sensations, especially to your memories, your thoughts. Because we repress them, we try to ignore them or we try to go away from them with this judgmental mind, with these negative judgments. So when we do concentration meditation, still you have to bring your mind back to the object from whatever you hear, from whatever you remember, but you bring your mind back to your meditation object with a positive attitude, without judging. This is very important. You are learning to know what you experience without judging. So these three exercises are very, very important for the concentration meditation. First thing is cultivating concentration, learning to keep our mind in, on one topic without wondering. This is the first exercise. The second thing is always being in the present. Learn to be in the present. And third thing, whatever you experience in that moment, not to judge, not to judge. You can bring your mind back to the meditation object without judging. You are not making any fight. You are not uh, making any fight with whatever you experience. No need to fight. But simply what you do is, you know, uh, I, uh, I, I am here in this sound, but that is not my object. So simply you are allowing that sound to be there you are not going to stop it, but what you are simply do is bring, you are taking your attention back to the meditation object. So you can do it in a friendly way. This is very important. Or you can, you can uh, do it in an aggressive way too. Oh, I can't concentrate because of these thoughts, I can't concentrate because of this sound. So you can create some inner negative reactions towards them. So then no peace at all. But the real way of, real way to do this Buddhist concentration meditation is to make friends with whatever you experience in that moment and then let them be there. No need to do anything to them. Let them be there and only what we have to do is we are bringing back our attention to our meditation object. So when we do these three exercises, mainly these three exercises, being in the present, learning to focus our attention to our meditation object, and make friends with whatever we experience in that moment. You can actually cultivate your conscious mind. You can make your conscious mind in stronger. So then, after that, you can use that conscious mind to open the unconscious mind and look at the unconscious mind. So again, Mind is the instrument to look at the mind. There are no other any external instruments, only mind. So now your mind is 
qualified enough to look at the unconscious mind. So after that, you can slowly open your unconscious mind. That means you can allowing your mind to do whatever mind likes to do. You can allowing your mind to remember whatever mind wants to remember. Before we are not allowing, because we are not ready to do it. Whenever we allow our mind to do whatever mind wants to do, then mind wanders and we cannot control, we are not able to bring it back. Therefore, in the, in the beginning stage of our meditation, we always try to control our attention, not control our thoughts. Please understand clearly, we are not going to control our thoughts. What we are going to control is our thinking. So thinking and thoughts are two different things. So we are not allowing to think whatever mind wants to think. But thoughts, they come. They come always. We are not going to control them. There is no way to control thoughts. But we can control our thinking because thoughts happen. Thinking is something that we do. Please understand this thing very clearly. Thoughts are something happens. It happens. They are happening. We don't know what will be the next thought. Who knows? Because it happens. But thinking is a different thing. Thinking is something that we do. So in the concentration meditation, what we are doing is, we are not going to control our thoughts, we are not going to repress them, we allow them to come. If they want to come, we let them come, but we, we are not going to think about them. So please understand this very important point, otherwise you miss the entire practice. Hmm? if you try to cons control your thoughts. So no need to control your thoughts, but try to control your thinking. That means you are not going to think whatever mind remembers. Mind can remember whatever mind wants, but we are not going to think about them. We always try to bring our thinking mind back to our meditation object. So now, after practicing this concentration meditation, now you are able to look at your mind. So then you can open your mind. If you are, if the judge is not there, then mind behaves very naturally. That is very normal. If somebody is judging you, then your actions, your words and your behaviors are not natural. So this happens always because of our judging mind. Mind is not working naturally. Now you are not judging. You are trained yourself to not to judge now. Therefore you can, really you can open your unconscious mind. You can allow your mind to think whatever mind wants to think. You can allow your mind to remember whatever mind wants to remember. Even if you know that you had some very bad memories, very strong negative emotions, consciously you can invite them to come now. You can recall them. and see what happens. So you do this meditation now to understand them, not to control them. So your attitude is now different. You are loving them, you are inviting them, you are recalling them now because you want to understand about the nature of the mind. So if they come, you can watch them. You are not thinking now, uh, you are not thinking that uh, they are disturbing you. No, you, are, you do not think in this way now. Now you can observe. When they come, you can observe. What happens to me when the mind remembers those past anger? Mm. So this is very important. Uh, you 
open your mind for what? To look at it, to understand it, and to solve it. So, whenever you remember those past memories, whenever you invite to those past emotions, just see what happens to you. If something happens to you, please notice it, what happens to your breath. You can observe what happens to my breath, what happens to my stomach, what happens to my heart. So, you can, you can observe. No need to hide, no need to repress. We are not going to repress it now. If you are not judging them, and if you are not repressing them, then they come, if sometimes they come, but really they are unable to disturb you. They are not able to disturb you. Because we are not attached to them. We, are, we do not judge them. We are far away from them. And other reason is, now we are in the present. Before, whenever mind remembers something, with that memory, we went to the past. Now, whenever you go to the past, you are not powerful, you are not uh, strong. Past is stronger than you. Now, you are in the present. And you ask them to come to the present. So, whenever past come to the present, then the present is more powerful than the past. So, this is something you can experience. Whenever uh, those memories come to you, whenever you are not prepared, then you can see they are very strong. They can drag your attention. They can disturb you. But whenever you consciously remember them, whenever you invite them to come, then they can't do anything. Because they, now they come to your own home. Before you went to their homes, whenever you went to their homes, you are just a visitor. You can't do anything. You have to surrender to them. But now, all these unconscious stuff comes to the surface level. So this is a real change, a real change. In the early stages of Western psychology, uh, always they ask you to go to the past to solve some problems, especially this uh, Sigmund Freud's time and his teachings is even now when the psychologists practice Sigmund Freud's theory, they always ask you to go to the past to solve problems. But uh, the, the, the insight meditation, the, mirror, the, the beauty of the, 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 the interesting thing of insight meditation is, it asks the past to come to the present. So this is a huge difference. So what meditation does is, meditation makes a stage, a screen, so called the present moment, and asks all these past events, past memories, past emotions to come and replay. So you are in the present, and they are becoming just sceneries. That's all. But whenever you go to the past, the past becomes live and powerful and you are becoming a shadow. So now you are the observer. You are the spectator. So when you practice insight meditation, you are the observer. You are the spectator. And then whatever comes you can observe. Even if something happens to you, you can observe it too. So this is very important. You are not expecting an ideal meditator. Hmm? Ideal meditator means you are not expecting a uh, perfect one's mind. No. If your mind is again agitated, 
you, oh, yeah, mind is agitated. You can observe it. Mind becomes agitated because of this past memory. So you can see. And you, you do not judge, ah, this should not happen. No, no judging. You just observe. So when you do insight meditation, or when you practice this concentration meditation to make your mind qualified to do insight meditation, then your mind becomes like a mirror, a mirror. So mirror is something very beautiful. Mir that doesn't mean that mirror is always reflecting beautiful things. No. Whatever comes to in front of the mirror, it reflects. It doesn't judge. It doesn't, it only say, it just says what is there. That's all. It doesn't try to keep whatever comes or it doesn't try to reject. So no rejection and no holding, just reflects whatever comes. So this is the mind that we need to do insight meditation. So the concentration meditation helps us to make our mind like a mirror, mirror-like mind. So when you practice concentration meditation, your mind becomes a mirror, like a mirror. And uh, so when, the, when your mind becomes a mirror, it's so peaceful. It gives a lot of blissfulness, a lot of joy, a lot of inner happiness and peace and tranquility. It's good. But all these experiences are not our final destination, not our final goal. We have to use them to understand the nature of our thoughts, to nature of our emotions. So, uh, concentration meditation is not, not the destination. Even though it gives blissful experience, joyful experience and pleasant experience to the meditator. It is not a home that you, we can stay forever. It is a vehicle. Actually, concentration meditation is a vehicle. It's a car that we have to use to go this journey. So, the Buddhist teachings say that concentration meditation is a vehicle. That's a big difference. Before the Buddha's time, every, all the meditators thought that the concentration meditation is the destination. So they want to stay there forever. The Buddha said, the Lord Buddha told us, it's not the destination. So we, ha we have to, we need it as a tool. We need it as a vehicle to go our journey. So we can use this mind like a mirror to look at the mind, to make the mind free, to make the mind empty, to free from suffering. Thank you. Uh, one thing you are mentioning about the subconsciouses that accumulate a lot of garbage by most adults who are ignorant. Is there a technique in the Buddhist teaching to get rid of this by, uh, I don't know where is a meditation of uh, forgiveness to get rid of all these garbages? Is there? I don't know. I'm not asking you. Is there a technique that you can use to eradicate all these years of garbage or hurting, feeling? Uh, to, to a Buddha technique to get rid of all this and replace by uh, to your inside meditation of positive value to clean and add good value to it, the direction you go. Is there a teaching on that? Yeah, well, so uh, it's a beautiful word, garbage. Mm. As you know, the, the, the direct, if I translate the Pali word bhavana into English directly, 
the direct meaning is cultivation. So mind is like a garden. It's like a garden. And there are hundred of thousand of plants now. And uh, we don't know what are the good plants and uh, beneficial, what are the fruits, what are the flowers and what are the weeds, we don't know now. It's like a forest. Because no gardener, no gardener is there, just uh, they grow by themselves. So the, the very first thing is, before you clean the garden, you have to, you have to understand what, are, what is this tree. Is this tree important, useful or harmful? So this knowledge is very important. Therefore, first, the very first stage is not cutting any trees. So, no need to cut any thoughts, no need to cut any emotions. First, we have to learn to look at them, to watch them. So, once you watch them, only then you can understand what you have to keep and what you have to remove. That can be the second step. So, no need to, there is no hurry to cut all the trees. So, after that, you can uh, give more and more water and fertilizer into that uh, wholesome plants by giving more and more support to your wholesome thoughts and memories and uh, feelings like kusala. You can help them to grow up, you can help them to cultivate. And uh, sometimes we had to uproot, uproot things, hmm? uproot our past anger, fear, some sadness, we had to uproot them. But uh, first we had to be strong enough to uproot them, because now they are very big trees, no way to uproot. So first we had to become stronger, that's why first we had to practice concentration meditation. So when you practice concentration meditation, then your mind becomes flexible. So, mudu bhuto kamaniyo. Mudu means your mind becomes softer. Mudu bhuto kamaniyo. Kamaniyo means your mind becomes workable. Now our mind is not workable. It is very, very... Uh, something like very arrogant. Hmm? So we have to do something to make it workable and flexible. Hmm? So when you practice concentration meditation, then your mind becomes workable and flexible and softer and tender and gentle. So then very easy to uproot whatever you want to uproot. Hmm? And whatever you want to plant, it's very easy. If the mind is very dry, like a desert, then no way to plant any wholesome thoughts, any wholesome emo feelings and qualities. Hmm? But the, the, the mind likes to compare with people, like, what, what this fleur got, so I have to get better than the fleur. So how do you actually counter the comparing part? Com comparing, or comparing, like, this guy got some, something, some, some cool stuff. So I want to get better than him. So how do I counter the comparing part? Yeah, mind is something, uh, actually our mind is like a child. Hmm? Uh, very childish mind that we have. Because uh, we do so many things to our body. How many times we feed to our body? how much medicine that we offer to our body and how much exercises we, we are doing for our body. But we do nothing for our mind, nothing, really nothing. Therefore, mind is still like a baby, like a kid, like a child. So, you know the, the nature of children, nature of child, 
So when you give a toy, so they, they keep the toy, they, they uh, hold the toy from their both hands and then uh, the, the, that toy becomes their whole world. They forget completely everything. Hmm? They stay with the toy for a while. So our mind is like that. Whenever you give an object to the mind, objects are coming from our senses. So whenever object an object comes to the mind, mind takes as a toy. Mind takes that object as a toy and mind wants to play with it as a child. So this happens all the time and after a while mind uh, is bored and then looking for a new toy and uh, whenever mind gets a new toy again mind starts to play with that toy. So this happens normally. Therefore if you really want to stop this, uh, this uh, game then what you have to do is not to give any, not to put any conditions or rules or regulations. That is not the way to educate child. Hmm? What you have to do is you have to let the mind learn. Let the mind be mature. So meditation, actually what meditation does is Meditation gives some opportunity to our mind to learn, to be mature, to get some wisdom. So when mind gets wisdom, when mind understands the nature, then mind doesn't play this game anymore. It stops by itself, like we are not playing with toys now. Hmm? We had played, but now we are not playing with toys anymore. Because it, it is nothing for us, no? It is nothing for us, for adults. So same thing, when your mind becomes mature, not when yourself, we are matured, but not psychologically, not spiritually. Therefore, when we meditate, that meditation makes your mind mature, when your mind becomes mature, then mind, only then mind stops all these silly games, what mind had played. It is natural transformation. Many speakers talk about the mind. Actually, I want to ask you this question which has been troubling me for years. Where is the mind actually located? Is it in our physical body or somewhere else? Somewhere else? Thank you. What is, what is, what is mind for you? Hmm. Whenever we use, we are using words, then we think there are some things for that words. Because uh, we, think, we think that if whenever I say a table, then you can ask where is the table. Mm. Then I have to say it's here or it's in, in the room or somewhere. So words are things are going together for, for some times, not all the time. There are some words, but really we cannot visualize them. Mm. So, when we say mind, actually it is not for something. Mm. Not for something. Some materialistic thing. So, when we say body, yes, there is some body. These photograph photos can show. And... Uh, we can touch, we can feel. But uh, mind, when we say, when we use that word, mind, we use for certain activities. 
Actually, everything is an action, not only the mind. Everything is an action. Activities, all are activities. If I am say that, uh, like sickness, like pneumonia, and uh, you can ask, what is pneumonia? Can I see it? So it is no way to show it, because it is some inner activity. Pneumonia is. Hmm? Happiness. What is happiness? Nobody can see it through the eyes. We can see their faces, their smile, their beauty, but that is not the happiness. Hmm? So, really mind, whenever we say mind, it is for some non-physical activities. We use that word for non-physical activities. Hmm? Thinking. So sometimes we say mind for thinking. Thinking means something that we do, but we can't uh, materialize it. No way to materialize it. But we do. So, uh, if you ask me, oh, Upul, what are you thinking? So I can say I am thinking, I am thinking about Sri Lanka now. So you can challenge me, oh, prove it, Upul, prove it. <laughs> so no way to prove, how do I prove that I was thinking about Sri Lanka? <laughs> but it's true for me, I was, I really, I was thinking about Sri Lanka. But no way to prove. So for the mind, actually we can't ask, this uh, evidence, it's very personal, very personal, but, but still we can do something because we are suffering. We are suffering and whatever you do to your body to overcome suffering, it doesn't help. Because suffering is not something coming from the body. Body is suffer too. Body suffers too, but the reason is not in the body. So therefore we use that word, but really it, it, it doesn't mean that there is something called mind. Some activities are there, we can control, we can accelerate and we can stop. That's all. In other words, you're saying that the, the mind cannot be independent of the body. Well, at the moment, they are not independent from each other. Hmm? So whatever happens to the body, mind feels, mind feels it. So if, if we are hungry, mind is not happy about it. If we are physically sick, mind is also sick. So in our level, in our ordinary level, mind is not independent from the body. Uh, and mind is not independent from, or from the world too, not only from the body. Whatever we hear, it affects to the mind. Whatever happens in this world, it affects to the mind. So really mind is not independent. But we can make the mind free. We can make the mind really free from everything, not only from the body. Because this is unnecessary involvements, unnecessary psychological and emotional involvements are there. So no need. With, un with this understanding, you can make your mind free from whatever it attached to. But at the moment, mind is not independent. Because I learned one thing from a scientist, huh? later research, that our mind is with cellular level. All the cells got a mind, and intellect work to contain by your brain. Huh? So they all have mind, even the single cell in your body has a mind by itself. They're connected all together, according to the latest scientists they talk about. So if your mind is toxic, right? Uh, they say, I say garbage and they can influence all your body. That's why people get sick, you know, cancer and all that. So that's why I'm saying is the mind is interconnected to the body through 
what we call, the cognitive scientists, cellular level. So the, if the toxicity or the garbage, as you just mentioned, is, is not eradicated, that's why people get sick. And they say, they say stress. Stress adds a lot of sickness, right? So I'm asking now, is there a technique that can detox this toxicity, <laughs> right? To a meditation, well, I don't know, right? And uh, replace with positive fertilizer so that the person can have a better transformation. Yeah, exactly. That's why I, I, I told that all these psychosomatic uh, symptoms, it, they come from our mind. Hmm? Really, our body is suffering because of the mind. Hmm? Really, our body is suffering because of our thoughts and emotions. So, there is no way to make our body free from the mind. That is not possible. And no, no need to do it. But uh, we can make our mind detached from the body. That is, of course, possible and we have to do it. Hmm? So, so when you can see, whenever, uh, whenever you are psychologically suffering, you can see what happens to your face, what happens to your body. Hmm? Whenever you are angry, just see what happens to your uh, eyes. Hmm? So all are suffering. All are suffering. <coughs> this, is, this is very practical experience. We all, we don't need a lab to experience these things. We don't need any scientific knowledge to understand this. Just by looking ourselves, we can understand. And uh, whenever mind is happy, whenever mind is pure, and whenever mind is pleasant, the face becomes pleasant, our face becomes beautiful and handsome, and everything, even, even our handwriting, is becomes becoming uh, beautiful, whenever mind is beautiful, and whenever mind is irritated and agitated, even nobody can read our handwriting. Uh, so they become... Ugly. So mind is the creator. That's the Buddhist, very beautiful Buddhist teachings. Mind is the creator. Mano pubbangama dhamma, mano setha mano maya. Everything is leading by the mind. Mind is the leader for everything. For everything, whatever we have created, mind is the leader. And mind goes first. And everything made by the mind, therefore, if the Creator is bad, ugly and negative, then the creation definitely must be ugly, bad and negative. Because impure Creator cannot create something pure. That is impossible. And if the mind is pure, and if the mind is beautiful, and if the mind is pleasant, then whatever that mind creates, that whatever that mind makes, all the outcome is pure, beautiful and pleasant. So therefore, we have to make our mind beautiful, we have to make our mind pure and we have to make our mind pleasant. So, that's why meditation is so important. So when we meditate, what we are doing is, during the meditation, we are removing all kind of unwholesome things and cultivating wholesome qualities. So by removing unpleasant, by removing unwholesome things from the mind and by planting and cultivating wholesome qualities and skills, we can make the mind beautiful, we can make the mind healthy. So healthy, only healthy mind can create something beautiful. Otherwise, if the mind is sick, whatever that mind produces, uh, all kind of production is unhealthy. So mind makes unhealthy family, 
unhealthy society, unhealthy world. Uh, uh, you're talking about this meditations can bring joy and happiness to ourselves. What, about, what is the next step or criteria for a person to reach the final goal of liberation? Is not to meditation or something else? Well, uh, what is how to go beyond meditation? Well, first we have to meditate. Mm. Uh. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, as we discussed earlier, that uh, meditation gives, especially concentration meditation, will give a lot of joy and blissful experience. We never experienced in our life. We experience only happiness. Uh, our happiness is depending on other people and other things. So we borrow happiness from them, therefore they can take it back. And whenever they take it back, we suffer. And uh, the first time that meditator experience inner happiness, it is not depending on others, inner joy and inner blissfulness. And uh, you can enjoy it. Of course, no problem, you can enjoy it. And naturally, meditators attach to it, attach to that inner peace, inner tranquility. Therefore, they want to continue the meditation, they want to sit every day, they want to stay in a meditation center forever uh, to, to experience that inner tranquility and inner joy again and again. So naturally, attachment comes to it. And you, as I said, uh, we think that, uh, that joy is the ultimate destination. Therefore, we want to establish ourselves there, we want to stay there. But really, it is not the final destination because attachment is there. Whenever you attach to something, then you are not free, you are not independent. Uh, you are depending on something. Now you are depending on your own happiness. Before you are depending on external happiness. Now you are depending on internal happiness. So it doesn't matter, if you are depending on something, then you are not totally free. So whenever you realize it that, that we are not free, you are not free, I am not free, because I am depending on whatever I experience now. So whenever you realize it, then you have to make some effort to let go of that attachment too. Not the let go of happiness. So that is a wrong interpretation. No need to let make any effort to let go of the happiness or let go of the joy. We have to learn to let go of the attachment to the joy, attachment to the peacefulness. So then you are free whether happiness is there or not, it doesn't matter. So the freedom is the ultimate goal of the meditation. So you can say uh, there are several stages or steps of the meditation. So first step, second, te second step, third step. Or the Buddhist uh, teachings say there are two kinds of meditation, concentration and insight, samatha and vipassana. So samatha meditation or concentration meditation gives all kind of these beautiful experiences and uh, when you practice vipassana meditation or insight meditation, then you are learning to look at the nature of the happiness, look at the nature of the joy, look at the nature of the peace. And once you realize the nature, then you, you can simply let go of the attachment to them. So you can say it is, it is a meditation too. No need to say beyond meditation, it's a part of the meditation. Any other questions? Uh, if there is none, um, we thank Brother here for this excellent Dhamma talk by a big sadhu. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. sadhu.